Um, yeah, so my name's Sam Taylor. Um, I was a learning technologist here for many years before moving to Cranfield. Um, I am still a learning technologist and I moved there in March and I've been using Mahara um, more than I can remember and I absolutely love it. And I'm Aurelie Owens, um, I'm a learning technologist at Cranfield University, I've worked there for nearly nine years now, it's scary. Um, and I'm a Mahara novice, um, um, Sam's apprentice basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our school is Cranfield Defence and Security, uh, CDS School of uh, Cranfield University. Uh, it's quite a special school in many ways. Uh, it's one of uh, four schools of Cranfield University. The other ones are School of um, um, Energy, Envir Environmental Technology <coughs> and Agri Food. The other ones are agri um, uh, sorry, Management and Aerospace Transport and Manufacturing. We are um, exclusively postgraduate education, so master's degree level and PhD students. Um, the rest of the university is based in uh, Bedford, uh, but we are uh, near between Sweden and Oxford um, in a little village called Shrivenham at the Defence Academy. Um, uh, the majority of our students come from military background or military industry, um, not all of them, but a lot of them, um, and um, the majority are part-time students, although we've got some full-time students and short course students, so different modes of study as well. Um, they all uh, study for taught masters, uh, PG certs, and variants, um, if they're on short courses. Um, some subjects that we have are forensics, defense leadership, <coughs> systems engineering, cyber ops, um, guided weapons design, military vehicle engineering, and explosives. That's only a few of them. <laughs> yeah, exciting. So, why Mahara? Now, most people say, well, what is Mahara? And I hate starting off trying to describe Mahara because it's such a big tool and there's so many elements to it. So instead of starting with what is Mahara, I start with the, well, why you should be thinking about Mahara. And it supports all these wonderful learning processes, recording, reflecting, presenting, collaborating, self-assessing, evidencing and communicating. And what I love is that with Mahara, it's not just text. It is so many different types of media files you can actually add to your portfolio page. Now, my experience at Solent were, was that academics liked the idea of having a digital portfolio rather than a ring binder, which students would just stuff paper in with absolutely no context around it. This way, the students were forced to decide what artifacts to use put it into the portfolio page and give some context around it so there is actually learning being evidenced. Um, and it's flexible as well. So like I said, with paper, you know, you have to format it a certain way. With the e-portfolio, they have a blank canvas. They can then really let their creativity fly with it. So our first step at CDS, the Council Defence and Security, well, we've had Mahara installed on our Moodle VLE server since 2012. And um, it's not only baby steps, we come from the not moving to actually skip the crawling and running now. <laughs> so what we've got, we've had, uh, it wasn't in use because we had no expertise in our school. Uh, I didn't know how to use it. Um, I had no time to learn how to use it. Uh, I didn't have any good examples, and I couldn't show staff examples of how to use it, staff and student examples. Um, I couldn't support it, and nobody else could, and we hadn't customised it. It was straight out of the box, on the server. If anybody needs it, it's there. Uh, and that's what I was say, saying to people. Um, Cranfield campus have uh, tried uh, Pebble Pile and getting demonstrations, etc. They are Blackboard user and the other campus with Moodle users. Um, but that wasn't in use either. either. But then, Sam arrived. Uh, <laughs> and um, so um, she could actually start answering questions. Before Sam arrived, I told our staff, Sam's arriving, she knows all about Mahara. If you've got any questions, please ask. And they did. Um, a, a few negatives, a few positive. The negative questions and then sort of statements is, is it secure? Uh, can the students share my material all over the world? Will I lose my IPR? Will they put my slides up and share it to everyone? Why use Mahara? Can't I do that on, the, on Moodle, on the VLE? Um, I don't need scaffolding <coughs> support. I just lecture my students. Mm -hmm. So that's things we've heard. The positives, uh, I, Sam, Sam, I've got an idea. Can you help me? Can Mahara do this, this? Can we use it for group work? Can it uh, be used for assignments? Um, and, and this is 
the start of Mahara booming really um, in our school. Mm. So this summer, one of my first things that I did when I joined Cranfield was uh, look at how Mahara could support the School of um, Defence and Security. So together we had a look at um, creating the support site. So my time at Solon, I used the admin site as the main support page. I did exactly the same at Cranfield because it worked. It worked in my previous job and why wouldn't it work in my new job? I also used um, the admin account to become friends with the students that have logged in there. So I go to the admin settings, look at the users that have logged in over the last couple of days, and I try and make friends with them. That way that they have a constant admin support site companion with them throughout their studies. Um, and I also learnt the uh, less is more is approach. Um, you know, Domi did a great presentation last year about how you, know, you shouldn't just spoon feed your students all the way. Just give them the basics and then they can teach themselves basically. So we scaled back the amount of help we've developed. And also we spent um, a lot of time linking to the wonderful Mahara Wiki, so the, um, the guides that Christine has been writing, so that's good. Um, also we've been um, fortunate that you know, what we didn't have at Solent, which I believe they do now, but what we definitely have at CDS are regular meetings with the academic staff. So before a course is due to run, we have a course planning meeting and in that session we have an hour to two hours and we just talk about how we're going to support the delivery of that course from a service point of view. And that's where we get to advertise Mahara and what it can do. And that way we have the captive audience off the head of the course. They can't run away when we start talking to them about Mahara and we can show them what's possible. And the word is actually starting to get around. So once we started all that in, in the summer, started to get things together, it was then time to try and find our champions to use it in anger. Yeah, the first one is uh, one of our team staff um, volunteered his uh, Nephil policeman student, a couple of uh, policeman students who um, had a, a, a blank Mahara page. Sam just taught them the tools, so how to use it, and they went running and, and just built a, um, a portfolio of their um, placement um, evidence and things they've done during the placement. And uh, then uh, we're going to talk about the EOE, which is the Explosive Ordnance Engineering course in a minute. The systems engineering for defense capability and forensic program courses also have interest and we are starting to develop things with them. Um, we're looking at um, our staff and, and actually, like Siggy said earlier, leading by example. If they are doing their HEA fellowship applications, for those who are doing these or their uh, PG certs through Mahara, then they will be more familiar with Mahara and then get their students to use it as well. Uh, the doctoral training centres, which is our PhD students um, as well, and um, his uh, Paul Digital Poster. Paul is one of our systems engineering um, lecturers, and he's done a digital poster to present some of his students' works um, uh, doing um, Lego um, engineering, basically. Um, So it's meant to be a dog. Sniffing whether it's a safe package or not. So it doesn't like it, so it growls at it. So this is an academic wanting to use Mahara for his own personal gains. You know, this was him advertising his unit, his module to other students. Yay! Yay. <laughs> And the fact that he could actually combine you know, the digital media within the poster was a big you know, selling point for him because it was a poster that he wanted to share. So he has his paper, but he also has the, the, the different media. Um, and we've uh, created mock-up pages, and Sam's been pretty brilliant about that. <laughs> <laughs> so just very quickly, um, as Christina said, you, you know, when you get it out of the box, if you don't have a developer on hand, we aren't developers, we come from the teaching side of things. You can still customise it. So we stuck our Cranfield logo in the corner. It looks a bit ugly, but, you know, it's, we, we're, we're piloting it. It will get better. <laughs> um, we picked one of the um, basic themes that are in uh, Mahara. Um, hopefully, when we do upgrade, we can actually play with um, some of the colours. And we've just organised the dashboard so it's direct access to the support guide. And like I said, we just did exactly the same as I did at Solent. All the help is in the admin page there it's easy and it's actually open access as well so I'll give you the link for it at the end if you want to look at this version of it and just for example um, we have a little mini step-by-step -step guide so because our students are um, to get to the e-portfolio they have to go through Moodle first single sign-on 
it means that when we do group work, it's quite difficult to put students into groups if they haven't generated their account in the ePortfolio yet. So this is a sort of pre-induction activity which the students have to do before coming to an IT workshop just so we can move them into groups. Um, and this is a case today I've mentioned earlier, the uh, Explosive Ordnance Engineering. Um, we will um, just show you what we've done with them, ready. Uh, for one of their module in this course, which is a master's degree talk course, um, they have a module called Future Development, Scanning the Horizon in Explosive Ordnance Engineering. And this is a theme module that runs along um, uh, all their other um, modules during the year. They got some um, residential, so one day or two days residential during the year to track the progress. Uh, but they do the rest online and in groups interacting together. Um, the, um, what they have to, to do for this module is to research how a requirement has changed here historically and evaluate how the technologies evolved. Um, to meet this requirement. And they just look at uh, weaknesses and compromises with the current technology solutions and, and, and what they think uh, could be done. Um, and what we've had uh, in the last year uh, with this module is um, for this exercise, they thought um, they had communications issues. The students reported difficulty of communicating with the part-time students and short course students, which weren't always here. Um, they um, um, had a workshop meeting which I attended um, and um, they had, uh, the students thought they had uh, no structure or limited structure to the requirements so that the assessment brief wasn't matching what they expected. And so the course director and the module leaders felt that Mahara might be a tool that could help them and approached us about it. Uh, and we started addressing some of the concerns. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So these are our learners. So they're 26 mature students um, from various different backgrounds. It's a mixture of part-time and full-time students. Uh, we have four ladies, 22 gents. Um, most of them have come from a military background, so we've got representatives from the Navy, Army and Air Force in different countries. Uh, people from the Defence Science Technologies, Defence Equipment and Support, kinet Kinetic and the Atomic Weapons Establishment. And the countries they represent are the UK, New Zealand, Australia, India, Singapore and Pakistan. So these are them, aren't they lovely? Some of, what's great is that if they're sponsored by um, a company, they have to wear their uniform. So it's absolutely wonderful to see all the students in their uniforms. And this year, there are these people. Next year, they might be completely different. Yeah, it'll be completely different makeup next year. So the setup, right, this does look complicated, but bear with me. So all the students had to do the pre-induction activity. This is so they could generate their account in the e-portfolio. All we did was get them to go into Mahara and upload an image of themselves. Yeah, nice and easy, it's their first introductory baby steps into Mahara. Then what we did was we put them into one main ePortfolio group um, and we provided access to all the other groups in there as well. So once the students were in there, we separated them into their nine groups, allocated them a template which they will use. The way it's made is that only those that are in the groups are the admins, but the other students can access it. So the pages are locked, that only the admins can actually edit the pages. All the other students can do is just look. And then finally, the module manager and course director, they have access to all of the EOE groups. And because they've worked quite closely with us, they actually know how Mahara works, which is a plus. Having lecturers who actually know how the system works is such, it just makes life a lot easier. They were very involved in setting up the templates and the example page. Mm. Um, so this is what the template looks like. Uh, we've got an, a requirement title um, at the top, which will be changed, which is changed by the students. Uh, then we've got the assessment specification, which basically stays here as a reminder um, 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 of the task they have to do, so they can stay on task. Um, the meeting notes and comments are things that they, they will edit and add um, um, journal entries to. Um, and then they've got the drop uh, under paper and resources. They basically have a drop box for the files and a series of links they can edit in there. They also um, encourage to use the forums to interact um, about their group uh, work. And these are the Mahara forums in their group. And um, so as um, Sam said we had a pre-induction activity, but then we did a classroom induction activity with them. It was a 15-minute activity. 
Um, the students were uh, first given a talk by Sam uh, about how to use Mahara, a brief talk about the tools and how things interact, etc. Now, most of those students are fairly competent IT-wise, um, um, and they were okay with that. Then they got given a talk um, about post making a poster by our, our director, Claire, uh, who work, worked closely with us on this as well, because the output of this work will be a potentially a poster, is likely to be a poster for a lot of them. They can do any display they want, but for a lot of them it will be a poster. So they, they, she gave them a talk about that, and then they had to basically listen to that. And their hands-on activity then, which was um, facilitated by us and the staff, it was um, both of us and the module manager and the course directors, uh, was to actually, in their Mahara uh, example page, put in the meeting one, uh, n basically notes about what they've learned during that session. So it's making it for, for a purpose. Uh, so we supported the activity and it was blessed. <laughs> yeah, so this was um, a sort of mock-up I did with the lecturers just to show the students how it works. So the idea is that every time the students had a meeting, one person as part of that group would write up the notes and then everybody else can add comments underneath. And this is why I'm excited about the indented comments and the threads in comments, because this will make it so much easier. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is a sort of example, and as part of the activity we did in the workshop, we got the students to have a go. So we got them to think about what Claire had told them about poster design, write up their notes, and then comment. Some thought it was a bit of fun, and just like to play, um, putting in pictures and images and, you know, just used it as a way of getting to know how the system worked. And others took it quite seriously, you know, quite in-depth messages. So it was really, really interesting, the students actually understanding what it was for and actually using it. And you, you can't see the times, but they carried on doing it till 11 o'clock at night on a Friday right. night. You know, these are engaged students, so we were quite excited. Yeah, 11 o'clock, soldiers on Mahara, oh gosh. <laughs> So a quick progress report, because this, this only happened last month and um, you know, it's looking quite exciting. So out of the nine groups, there are three that are very active, that are posting almost daily within their groups. Um, three other groups, they're posting sort of weekly. Two are only active in the um, private forums within their groups. Now, I thought they were you know, missing act in action because I couldn't see any data for them. But then I thought, okay, let's see what's happening they were actually talking a lot in their forums. They didn't want their work to be seen by the other students, which is a bit interesting. And then one group is still missing in action, no idea what they're doing. One of the students hasn't even logged into Mahara, so you know, where do you step in and start chasing that student? Is it for us to do or is it for the lecturer to do? I don't know. So anyway, they've got their poster presentations in January and we're gonna go and have a look and have a chat with them, get some really good feedback from them, hopefully. Um, they've got their final presentation in spring and then we'll look forward to the course committee report in the summer where we can actually see whether or not using Mahara has helped um, iron out the issues that they raised in the previous year's committee meeting. And this morning we actually had a thought for the process presentation to potentially give a portfolio group badge at that stage to the best use of the portfolio, but we're not quite, we need to install them. We have to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our next step, um, well, we're getting um, um, further interest now um, in different parts of the school and the rest of the university. Um, as for today's second one, actually, about that. Uh, we have the Systems and Advanced Systems Engineering Workshop, which runs in January, which will be using Mahara for, again, group portfolio work, slightly different stance on it, and presentation. And this will this time be combined with Turnitin um, assignment submission. Uh, Turnitin is used for all our coursework uh, in, in CDS. The digital crime part of forensic studies uh, will be looking at evidence collection from a crime scene, which sounds perfect for Mahara, because we're looking at evidence collection. Um, the systems engineering for defense capability course, uh, looking at using um, the evidence logging and thesis planning um, 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 for Mahara, Mahara for these, these, um, these purpose. And we've got other ideas. Um, we 
obviously need to approach and talk with staff about uh, all the things we've talked about, we've talked about. Uh, one is the EMS in security sector management. Now, this is an MSC that has existed for quite a while. We've got a UK-based version, and we had an Ethiopia-based version, which has now been stopped and started again as an East of Africa version. Um, we have a variety of students who are completely off-site, and we've got flying faculty going to teach them for a week at a time. But they will need study skills support, and we're, we're thinking of um, seeing how Mahara could help them uh, along their studies um, of for this. They are high level military and defense personnel in, in those countries and uh, they, they just need as much support as they can. Uh, we've briefly mentioned earlier IHE fellowships and PGCAP support, uh, which we're working on. Um, got close contact with uh, the people uh, who are dealing with that as well. Um, and the staff uh, research pages as well. We've had a few staff who looked at because got, they've got research groups and they would like to collaborate within their groups and record research they're doing and actually start doing research together using Mahara as a, as, as a recording system. And we've got a campus, campus uh, potential user as well, uh, the sustainable product design course, looking at employer engagement and market research. Um, and as from yesterday, inspired by some of the talks, we also have an other short course who develop a CPD program um, uh, we normally submit um, um, word files on uh, non on Moodle assignments in a page um, would actually be suited to have basically a template form and just fill it in in Mahara rather than having to go and submit word files and be e easier for staff to go and comment on that as well. So mm. that's another idea. Yeah. So that's the end of our talk. This is where we are geographically, if you want to find us. So we are employed by Cranfield, but we are based at the Defence Academy. And these are our details. Um, if you want to see our Mahara, it is there. And on there, there are links to both our Mahara profile pages and the um, help site. And on your way out, we have provided you some popping candy. So if you'd like to help yourself to some popping candy as you go in for coffee, you can end with a bang as well. So, <laughs> any questions? Oh. How are you going to use the training then? <laughs> <laughs> um, the idea is that um, you're going to get the students to print the page as a PDF, so make sure everything's visible. Provide a, a link at the bottom, a secret URL to the page, and that way the students as a group can submit it to Turnitin. The lecturer can mark um, using the quick marks, but it also um, reads the text as well, so it can scan and do the normal similarity report in the text. So that's just to sit, suit our regulations. But they've also got the link to go to the live version as well. It does also mean that there's something for the external examiners to see because we don't have these certain things rather than just having comments in anything with an empty Yeah, so you just print the page as a PDF, submit it to turn it in, and it does how it would do normally for a PDF. Okay, thank you very much, Sam and Holly. Thank you. <laughs> Right, we now have a...